So in this section, we're going to be talking about resonance. So a molecule that has resonance has the ability to delocalize electrons. All right, so we've got two molecules here. If we draw in our lone pairs, you can see that the first one here, well, you will soon find out if you don't know already, this one does not have resonance. This one here does have resonance. Okay. These two electrons can be moved into a bond, and we can force these two electrons in the pi bond to be forced onto the oxygen atom. One big important thing here is that it's the movement of only electrons. If your resonance in structure involves the movement of atoms, it is not a correct resonance structure. So we're only moving electrons, not atoms. Molecules with resonance exist in a more stable state than a similar molecule without resonance. All right, so here are a few guidelines to help you get better at resonance. Now, if you are not familiar with resonance, really the best way to get better at it is to practice, okay? Because you kind of have to get a feel for resonance and then it becomes second nature. But the only way you get that feel is if you practice, practice, practice. All right, so a few guidelines. Number one, the electrons being moved can only move to adjacent positions. And the adjacent position that you're moving them to must be able to accept those electrons, okay? We'll look at that in some practice problems. Number two, the charges that exist on a carbon to carbon double bond, carbon, okay, so carbons of a double bond, typically do not enjoy having uh, charges on them and also do not enjoy resonance, okay? So we're gonna be, we're probably not gonna have a lot of questions where you have a positive or negative charge on a carbon that is involved in a double bond. Number three, Atoms cannot move. You can't move the atoms, as we've already said. Okay, so that's a big one. The other thing is you cannot break sigma bonds. Okay, sigma bonds, you can't break them. You can break pi bonds and you can form pi bonds, but you cannot break or form sigma bonds. All right. Now, if you are not familiar with resonance, it's going to take some practice for you to kind of get the feel for it. One thing that helped me in the beginning was these two things that I like to do. One of them was for positive charges. Okay. And one of them is for negative charges. Okay. These are not, you know, rules of resonance. They're just things that helped me when I first got, got started in this sort of how do we do resonance. So when you see a positive charge, one thing that's very helpful is to think about opening a door. So you want to think open the door. Oops. Towards the positive charge. Okay, what do we mean by that? What I mean by that is, for example, right here, we have a positive charge on this carbon, and so if we have a pi bond, we're going to use the pi bond as a door or a gate, okay? And we're gonna kind of swing it open so that it's now over here, okay? It's now over here. In other words, this carbon kind of acts like a hinge almost. That's how I visualize resonance 
when I have a positive charge and a pi bond adjacent to it, okay? For negative charges, what helps me is this little thing that I like to say, which is lone pair becomes a bond and therefore a bond becomes a lone pair. All right. Now all of this is together. Okay, that's one phrase. Lone pair to bond forces a bond to a lone pair. What do I mean? Let's see. So lone pair to bond forces a bond to a lone pair. This is what helped me with resonance problems when I had a negative charge somewhere. And we will go through problems with that. So we will come back to these two little tidbits of information. But here we go. Below is an example of a correct resonance structure. So we actually already talked about this. So first what we need to remember is we got to make sure we remember those invisible hydrogens. So if this carbon right here has a positive charge, how does it get a formal positive charge? Well, it means that it only has two other bonds and they're not drawn, which means that we are going to, Im it's implied that they're hydrogens, okay? So I know that there are two invisible hydrogens there and I just drew them in. And so that's what causes this carbon to have a positive formal charge. Now, you have to remember that for resonance, we're only moving electrons, okay? I kind of like to think of electrons as chairs. So if I have a pair of electrons or a pair of chairs, so I have two stools, right? And I have two stools on my left. I guess we'll do this for y'all. On my left, right? And I can move two stools somewhere else. I can do that. And that would be moving a pair of electrons, which I can do when I'm doing resonance. Okay, so back to the analogy. Imagine we've got two electrons, but we're gonna pretend that they're chairs, okay? So each electron is a chair. I can take two chairs and I can move them, you know, to the next room, but a positive charge is created when you have an absence of electrons. You can't move the absence of chairs, okay? And just like how you can't move the absence of chairs, you cannot move the absence of electrons. So we don't want to move positive charges because they're the absence of something, okay? All right, but what we have here is we have these two electrons in this pi bond. And remember, we can move electrons in pi bonds. So what's going on is we are taking these two electrons and they are, they are creating a pi bond between carbon A and B. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of open the door towards the positive. Now this makes sense because electrons are negative and negative things are attracted to positive things. So it makes sense that these electrons in the pi bond would move towards the positive charge, okay? So you can kind of think of it logically. Now when that occurs, we will have, we still have our two invisible hydrogens here, one, two, but now this carbon has four bonds. And so its formal charge will end up being zero. Four minus four is zero, okay? And so that's cool, so there's zero formal charge there. But if we look at carbon A and B, so carbon A lost a bond, right? It used to have a double bond here, but it lost that double bond and now only has a single bond. And so if you do the formal charge for carbon A, you will get that it is, has a positive one formal charge. Okay, now B, B did change, right? But because B, the carbon B, kind of acted as 
the hinge of our door opening, if you will. The electrons never left carbon B, they just changed positions, but carbon B still has the same number of bonds it started with, okay? And so that's an example of a correct resonance structure. Here we have an example of an incorrect resonance structure. Now remember, there's a few rules. One, you only want to move electrons. Two, you do not want to move atoms. You can't move atoms. Well, that kind of goes with rule one, right? You only move electrons, okay? So you can't move atoms, and you cannot break sigma bonds, okay? That really should be up here. It's not listed, but we should include it as number four. Cannot break or make sigma bonds, okay? All right, so here we have, oh look, it's a negative carbon. So remember, what helped me when I first started getting, doing resonance was remembering this. When I have a negative charge, I think lone pair to bond forces a bond to a lone pair. So here is a negative charge on this carbon because of this lone pair. So that lone pair, lone pair to bond, so this lone pair turns into a bond, so we're gonna form a bond, a pi bond right there. Now when we do that though, right, we have an issue, because if we just do that, then we're gonna end up with too many bonds to this carbon. So let's look at that real quick. All right. So right now I have a lone pair, and I have a bond there, okay. So if I just take this lone pair and I force it into a bond, what will I get? Well, I'll get a structure that looks like this. Okay, but we have an issue because this carbon right here that we formed a new bond to is actually gonna have five bonds. You cannot forget that you have an invisible hydrogen here. So if I draw in my invisible hydrogen here, it's easy to see that this carbon has five bonds. One, two, three, four, and then five, that invisible hydrogen. Carbon cannot have five bonds because that means it would have greater than an octet. And remember, you cannot have greater than an octet unless if you're in the third period or below. We can't just form a pi bond. We have to, when we form this new pi bond, we're gonna have to kick electrons out, one bond out. And so remember, we can't break sigma bonds, but we can break pi bonds. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So lone pair becomes a bond, which then forces a pi bond, this pi bond, into a lone pair, okay? And the key is that the two electrons in the bond that we're forcing out goes to the carbon that is closest to it, right? The, one of the carbons that it's bonded to, but it's kind of like it's running away from this, the movement of these electrons. And that makes sense because the electrons don't wanna be near other electrons, okay? So that's why these electrons get pushed onto this carbon, which is far away from the movement of these electrons, okay? Plus it can't go this way because then again, we'll have greater than an octet on that carbon. Okay, so anyway, back to our problem here. We've got a lone pair turns into a bond, which forces a bond into a, well, this is a problem because they're forcing a bond into a bond, which actually can happen. But when they do that, that means they have to force another bond out. And in this case, they're trying to break a sigma bond and force a hydrogen to leave the molecule. That's not going to happen. So this, is not a correct resonance structure. Okay, this is incorrect, don't do that, right? You cannot break sigma bonds.
All right, so I think this is a good place to stop the video. In the next video, we're gonna go through more practice problems with this.